Well, my name is Adam King, and I'm uh, the off-campus living advisor here at Queen's University. A big issue I run into all the time is a lot of students don't know that the Usadors exist. So I'm the off-campus living advisor, and I'm, uh, I'm here to assist with all matters of off-campus living uh, for any Queen's University student. Uh, I always advise uh, students that come to me to uh, spend as much time as possible uh, looking for properties. The more time that you can kind of dedicate to your housing search, the better, the more likely you are to um, find accommodations that work best for you. The main leasing cycle in the Kingston area goes from May to May, uh, but sometimes you'll see September to April, so eight month leases or, uh, or September to September. Properties for May 1st generally start getting posted uh, in late October, uh, some in uh, November, but this is kind of like the early stages of properties getting posted. A lot more will be coming in late November and uh, through December, um, but then kind of consistently posted uh, from then on. So November and December isn't the end all be all of securing a, a rental property. There's still properties that will come available in January, February, and March. If people do have a lease agreement that ends April 30th, um, unless they're renting from Queen's Community Housing or a landlord contract program unit, uh, they only have to give 60 days notice of their intention to vacate by the end of the term. So that means for an April 30th um, uh, lease agreement, it would be for March 1st, they have to give notice before. It's one of the main challenges of the housing search process is that um, there isn't just one website that everybody's posting on. There are a ton of different websites. There's different listing services, so different Facebook groups, social media groups. There is, you know, Kijiji and different listing services like that, rentals.ca. But then there's also the unique property management companies and the buildings in the area. Some of them only post to their own website. So if you're not checking that, then you're not gonna be seeing everything that's available to you. Too often people will kind of focus in on one website or one or two website and kind of rely on that, especially like a listing service, but you're really doing yourself a disservice by doing that. You should really try to broadly search all over the place to see everything that's available to you. It's also dependent on the time of year as well. So if you're looking for a Queens community housing property, so that's a Queens owned and operated property, those are only posted to the Queens community housing listing service. And those get posted um, late November to early December. I do have a list of resources that I've compiled uh, for where you can kind of look for housing. So uh, students can always reach out to me and I'm happy to provide that. Um, and so selecting the right people to live with is one of the main points that I drive home whenever I'm talking with students. It's very important to select the right people. A lot of people are surprised to hear that your best friends may not always be uh, the best people to live with. You should always select people to live with that have similar priorities to you. You got to have discussions early on before signing a lease agreement with somebody or agreeing to live with them. What kind of expectations you have for living standards. So things like house cleanliness, how the chores are going to be managed and divided, um, having friends and guests or partners visiting and stay over, managing expenses, so utility costs, internet costs, and um, what everyone's expectation is for managing those things. If you are having difficulty finding housemates, which I would say you need to broadly search, not just ask around within your programs and your friend circles. I generally recommend to the fewer people that you live with, the easier things are gonna be. Um, it's a lot easier to manage a relationship with one or two people as opposed to five or six. Um, It's a really difficult question to answer just because rent does vary so much uh, depending on a number of factors. The main, the main factors that do uh, control kind of the rent pricing, the main one is location. So obviously properties that are in close proximity to the university are in high demand. Um, so obviously when there's higher demand or supply or limited supply, then uh, prices generally go up. Um, so the closer you are to the university, um, the downtown core itself or the waterfront, generally the more expensive you will be paying in rent. The type of property as well affects the price. So if it's an apartment or if it's a house, if, if it's a condo, if it's a brand new condo, um, obviously it's going to be a little bit more like an older one. Finishes in the prop as well. So a place with hardwood floors and granite countertops will be more expensive than a place without that um, and even amenities that are included. So if the place has parking, if it has laundry facilities on site, 
um, that is all things that impact um, pricing. If you're looking at a per room basis, you can find them anywhere from as low as 550 per room to even as high as 1100 per room, depending on what you're getting, like a brand new place with full amenities and like internet included. It's like uh, uh, bachelors and one bedrooms change anywhere from um, 900 to as high as up to 2000, uh, 2000 um, per month. Um, two bedrooms can be anywhere from 1100 to as high as 2400. And the same thing kind of applies to utilities. It depends on the age of the home, um, what type of you know heating system you have. So say if you have electric baseboard heating, it's going to cost a lot more than if you have a gas furnace. And it also depends on how many people you live with too. If you have um, six, seven roommates uh, living or people living in one house, obviously utility costs can be a lot higher than if uh, a few people live there. During your showing, uh, that's typically when you ask most of your questions when you're going through the property and, and taking a look. You should always ask lots of questions about the property, um, any previous maintenance issues that they've had or any kind of pest issues. You should always have these questions kind of pre uh, prepared ahead of time before uh, meeting with the landlord. I do have, again, a list of those that students can reach out to me and I'm happy to share. Uh, just commonly asked questions during showings. It's always very important before signing your lease agreement to make sure that you thoroughly read through it, but you want to make sure that you understand understand what you're signing. Students should also familiarize themselves with the Ontario Standard Lease Agreement. Since March 1st, 2018, most landlords in the province are required by law to use um, the Ontario Standard Lease Agreement. So just familiarize yourself with that and what that looks like. You should always know your rights and responsibilities as a tenant and know the landlord's rights and responsibilities as well. Yeah, so anytime you run into an issue with the landlord, um, or uh, even housemates. Um, I'm always there to help the off-campus living advisor is, is happy to assist and help navigate any of those challenges. I cannot offer legal advice as I'm not a, a paralegal or a lawyer, um, but I can help uh, students um, navigate the Residential Tenancies Act and understand uh, the Residential Tenancies Act. I do also offer mediation services uh, for uh, housemate conflicts. The Student Community Relations Office is another office as well that does offer uh, mediation for housemates make conflicts as well. Unfortunately, housing fraud is um, is a thing that exists. We definitely saw a spike in it in the last year or so, just with everything being virtual. Scammers were able to utilize that to their advantage. Scammers will often uh, target international students specifically, simply because they're not in the Kingston area and they can't physically view the property. So the best way to avoid housing fraud is um, always to set up a showing and view the property. If you're not able to do that, have a friend or somebody that you know go and view the property for you. If you can't go in person or have a friend go in person, um, you can set up a live virtual um, walkthrough of the property as well, because scammers will always come up with some kind of excuse as to why they can't show the unit, or they'll often use pressure tactics as well, saying, I have other people interested that will rent it without viewing. They'll send pictures and videos, uh, and even sometimes like uh, false documents, like certificate of ownership, uh, to kind of verify that they own the property, um, but still will refuse to show you it. So um, trying to set up a showing is always like the best way to, uh, to, to go about it. I always say to like, don't go off of like a video because you can get a video and pictures of a listing online 